Hi, my name's Heidi Conley. I'm a cardiologist at Mayo Clinic, and today we're gonna to talk about pulmonary valve regurgitation. This is a fairly common congenital heart uh, problem, can be related to a number of different things. Primary congenital pulmonary valve disease, which was either surgically or balloon treated, can cause pulmonary valve regurgitation, or it can be a part of more complex cardiac surgery, such as tetralogy of Fallot, where the function of the pulmonary valve is often sacrificed. As we go back to the normal heart, the normal heart has four chambers and four valves. The top chambers are called atria, right atrium on the right, left atrium on the left. The bottom chambers are called ventricles, right ventricle on the right, left ventricle on the left. The blue blood or venous blood or deoxygenated blood coming back from the body enters the two big veins and drains into the top chamber on the right called the right atrium. It then flows through a valve into the bottom chamber called the right ventricle. As that chamber fills, it gets the message to pump and blood is pumped out to the lungs. In the lungs, the blue blood is oxygenated and then the oxygenated or red blood returns to the left side of the heart and in the same manner enters the top chamber on the left called the left atrium, goes through a valve into the bottom chamber called the left ventricle and as that chamber fills it gets the message to pump and blood is then pumped to the body. Under normal circumstances there's no a connection between the left and right heart chambers after birth. So let's look at the right-sided heart valves as demonstrated here. We have uh, the top chamber on the right called the right atrium, the bottom chamber on the right called the right ventricle, and then blood is pumped from the right ventricle to the artery that sends blood to the lungs called the pulmonary artery. The two valves on the right side are called tricuspid and pulmonary valve. All valves have names so that when healthcare providers speak with each other about a particular patient problem, we know exactly what that person is talking about. When there is severe pulmonary valve regurgitation, enlargement of the right heart eventually occurs, and this can ultimately result in problems, including symptoms of breathlessness, fatigue, and right heart failure, fluid accumulation in the legs or in the belly. Symptoms related to pulmonary valve regurgitation can be pretty minor and difficult to identify. In fact, many patients have no symptoms for many years. Ultimately, fatigue, breathlessness, heart rhythm problems, and right heart failure can ensue. How do we manage patients who have pulmonary valve regurgitation? Uh, well, uh, there really are no good medical uh, therapies, but observation to identify the most appropriate time for valve replacement is important. In the past, the only type of valve replacement option was surgical but now we know that catheter-based interventions are possible for select patients. So here again, we demonstrate the schematic of the heart with pulmonary valve regurgitation, causing right heart enlargement and ultimately dysfunction and symptoms, and the surgeon goes in or catheter-based intervention is performed. Uh, with pulmonary valve replacement, that leakage uh, is alleviated and the right heart returns back to normal. We carefully weigh the indications for s intervention, either device or surgical intervention, with the benefits and try to identify the best time for intervention. Indications for pulmonary valve replacement in persons with severe pulmonary valve regurgitation include symptoms of breathlessness and fatigue and ultimately right heart failure, marked right heart enlargement or dysfunction, and finally heart rhythm abnormalities either from the top or bottom chambers. In select circumstances, there are other indications for pulmonary valve replacement.